Hey everyone, my name is Quincy Davis and I am going to jump right into this lesson because there's a lot of interest in up-tempo playing and ways of working on it because obviously it's, it's challenging, it's very difficult. Um, so this lesson is a direct follow-up from last week's lesson on up-tempo comping, okay? And you want to make sure you check that video out before you get into this lesson, but make sure you come back. And you also, before that even, you might, might want to go back to the lesson I did on up-tempo ride cymbal playing. Okay, so I'll put both of those uh, video and maybe make a playlist uh, so that all this makes sense and you can kind of follow along so that when you get to this lesson, you'll be ready. Okay, so in this lesson, I'm going to be focusing on five applications. Yes, five applications of Ted Reed's syncopation book, which I know you know, um, to up-tempo playing. I've personally found these exercises extremely helpful in handling and playing up-tempos. Um, and maintaining a certain sense of control and calm, you know, like kind of like Zen. You got to have Zen in your place. All you're going to see is me playing these exercises at very fast tempos. However, you know what I'm going to say? You got to practice all of these exercises slow at slow tempos and slowly build your way up to the faster tempos. Okay, do not be in a hurry. Um, and if you've seen my other lessons, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what happens. And if you're going to be practicing these faster tempos, you got to be careful because you might get a speed ticket. Okay, so for these first two applications, you're going to hear me apply the alternating snare drum bass drum concept, right? Um, every other note, I'm alternating. And the first way through, you'll hear me start with the snare drum. The second way through, you'll hear me start with the bass drum. And that's so that we get both permutations, okay, um, on, on both voices. Okay, and it's, you know, again, at these fast tempos, it's easy to tense up. And you'll probably see me kind of try to force myself to relax. I might even smile. Um, but the key is staying relaxed and making it... Um, as easy as possible, even though it's pretty fast, okay? So, here we go. Okay, if you've been checking out the slipper cam, then you know that I play with my heel up, especially at these faster tempos, because I just want the hi-hats to be very prominent and clear and crispy as possible, because that's the backbone of everything that I'm doing. It's the backbone of the time. Um, and it takes some muscle to do that, but once you get used to it, uh, it gets easier. Though I still have to check myself. It's easy to get lazy with the hi-hats, so um, that's what you'll notice me doing. For these next three applications, um, if you checked out the previous lesson, I keep on referring to it, but there's a lot in that that I am using and applying with these exercises. Um, I talk about you got to kind of think slow. We're playing fast, but you got to think slow. So these applications force you to think slow. So with the ride symbol and the hi-hat, we're going to be thinking at the tempo, right? But... At the same time, with the snare drum and the bass drum, we're thinking halftime, okay? So we're going to be thinking one. So if, if I'm playing syncopation in halftime, it'll sound like wah-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
da 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 meanwhile aha let's see what that sounds like and again and i recommend taking breaks because usually when you come back to it it's easier so and make sure you do this every day okay so half time against the regular time application of syncopation here we go feathering I don't always feather at fast temples um, because it sometimes it can bog the temples or the the time down a little bit but it's a good thing to practice even if you don't always do it so and some of you I would totally recommend against it because it, it can completely mess your time up if it messes your time up do not waste your time okay do not waste your time okay here we go halftime bass drum application and we're going to put the left hand on beat four of the halftime. messed up I messed up a little bit so it's the Olympics so I guess that counts as execution points right you deduct some execution points for me so be it oh well no it you know it happens and it's it it doesn't have to be perfect for you to be getting something out of what you're practicing you're aiming for perfect but perfection is not always achieved and that's fine in fact when we play it's not perfect so that's cool as long as you're focusing on all of these important things, relaxing, control, sound, feel, all these kinds of things, you're gonna flub here and there, and that's fine. Don't don't sweat it. Okay, so for this last application, I'm gonna be playing this the bass drum and the snare drum unison the whole time. The catch is, of course, we're playing at halftime. So we're think we're playing fast, but we're thinking slow. <sighs> and we're relaxing. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> here we go.
Does that mean I have to do it again? Oh, I don't want to do it again. All right, so that is the lesson. Five applications of Ted Reed's syncopation book for up tempos. And remember, take your time in, in achieving those faster tempos. Okay, slowly nudge the tempo up. If you just jump to those faster tempos, then it's not going to sound. It's, it's not going to sound good. It's not going to feel good. Um, you're going to be tense, and actually, you could hurt yourself. Okay, so be patient. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Until the next time, keep swinging, and be careful out there. You might get a speeding ticket. <laughs>